Good evening and welcome to the season premiere of Island View on East Link Community TV. Glad you could join us tonight as we kick off our 12th season here on Island View and we could think of no better way to kick off our new season than talking about one of PEI's favorite activities and I'm talking about PEI Burger Love. Burger Love just wrapped up its 11th campaign and like the rest of us, Burger Love has faced its fair share of challenges over the past 18 months. Joining me tonight to chat about this year's campaign is the president and creative director of Fresh Media, the good folks behind PEI Burger Love, Melody Dover. It's a real pleasure to welcome her back to the program tonight. Melody, thanks for joining us. Hi, Matt. It's great to be back. And I have to admit, it feels like the last year went by really quick. <laughs> as, as crazy as it's been, it's been rapid. Um, and yeah, we, we've had the question about why Burger Love was happening in September again this year. And uh, it really just comes down to safety more than anything. Uh, when we start planning Burger Love, uh, just in terms of the behind the scenes aspect, uh, we start all of that in December. And when we were starting our plans last December, 2020, uh, we just went into a lockdown mm -hmm. as a province and the Atlantic bubble had burst. And uh, so we looked at uh, the data and what, um, what Health Canada was saying about vaccinations and whatnot. And at that point in time, they had said vaccinations would be rolling out in August. Uh, and there were still tremendous restrictions for dining in and whatnot. And certainly a comfort level with the public wasn't quite there yet. So we thought, well, looking at what could be the best opportunity for people to have the most fun and restaurants to have the best opportunity for their participation with Burger Love, September looked like the best uh, to take a look at. So we made that announcement in January <laughs> when we were still in a lockdown. <laughs> and uh, as you might recall, we not only had a second wave and a third wave mm -hmm. of COVID, but here we are in a fourth wave. So regardless of these challenges, we're just really happy we had the campaign roll along in September. Um, we didn't have to cancel like some other mm -hmm. food events, uh, <laughs> didn't really have much choice about. And, uh, you know, huge shout out to the restaurants for making it work for September this year. Uh, you speak about restaurants and obviously there's, you know, people have talked about having to pivot in COVID and a lot of industries were hit hard in restaurants. It was so dif difficult for them because, <clears throat> you know, they were having takeout and then they were allowed to have in dining and then things changed and they had to pivot back and forth. And then yep. now it seems like we're rolling forward where it's, it's, it's more like it used to be. But from the restaurant's point of view, you know, when you spoke to people about Burger Love, how excited were they to, for some positivity to have people excited about something? People coming into the restaurant excited for Burger Love and getting a chance to go out and, you know, meet people for the first time. Some people haven't seen people for Absolutely. a long time. Absolutely. And, and I mean, we've heard those stories firsthand from uh, even some burger fans. Uh, during the recruitment component with Burger Love, even at that point in time, it was in the spring, and some restaurants weren't even sure if they were going to be open in the summer or what capacity they would be uh, allowed to have because there were still a number of restrictions um, at that point. But uh, the restaurants that did jump on board, they see the potential with Burger Love as a really positive community spirit event and a great way to support local and bring people together into their locations or even, you know, take out or picnics or whatever. Um, so regardless of the challenges this year, the fans still came out in droves for their Burger Love fix. Uh, we've had stories shared with us with family reunions, people that didn't get a chance to see each other during the lockdowns for uh, that year and a half. So, you know, you might not have seen your, your sibling for two years, but if they had an opportunity to come to PEI and reunite with you over a burger, that was pretty easy sell. Uh, we also had a uh, newlywed couple from Nova Scotia reach out to us who were coming to PEI for their honeymoon in September. And what better way to celebrate love than with burgers? Um, this year, we also had lots of uh, new contests and fun ways for people to connect with the campaign and just get out and just have some fun. And, you know, I think that um, Islanders really have been amazing this past year with supporting local and supporting local restaurants and just, you know, really recognizing that we're all in this together. And uh, I think that Burger Love is kind of a comfort for people now. You know, we're in year 11. It's mm -hmm. something familiar. And, 
you know, a burger can be considered a comfort food. So we like to think that Burger Love was a bit of a warm hug this year. And you talked about uh, there's so much more to Burger Love than just obviously going out and, and trying your favorite burgers. You have, <laughs> all, you reference kids contests and contests and you had all sorts of kids involved, you know, in various activities. Maybe you could speak a little bit more about some of those ones that took place during Absolutely. the campaign. Absolutely. Well, every year we have the uh, My Burger Love Kids contest where kids create a drawing of what their burger love would be and maybe a description and a title. We love seeing the drawings. Every year we have teachers uh, participate, families send in their kids' drawings. And I want to give a quick shout out to a teacher at Glen Stewart Primary, uh, her kindergarten class, Jennifer McKenzie. They all participated with Burger Love. <laughs> so it was pretty cool to see their uh, broad interpretation of what Burger Love was for, you know, maybe five or six year old. And I'm happy to report they didn't just have ketchup on them. They got a little <laughs> more creative. Um, also, each year we have uh, the Burger Mama contest, which we love seeing all the mamas with those happy baby bellies and happy <laughs> mommies. And if you are pregnant or expecting during Burger Love and you have burger cravings, let me tell you, it is a perfect month for you. Um, along with that, we had a really lovely story shared with Rainbow Beginnings Early Learning Center in Mount Stewart, who had their own Burger Love Day with the kids and let the kids put together their own burgers and which also included Cheetos and gummy bears. I, I'm not saying that'll be a future trend for Burger Love 2022, but you never know. We've had nacho chips on burgers before. Cheetos and gummies might be like the next trend. You never know. And uh, last but not least, every year we look forward to hearing from Mr. Dowling on his PEI Burger Love adventure with his class at Ellen Montgomery. The kids come up with this crazy creation every year it's run the gamut from cotton candy, uh, bologna, cereal, popcorn, you name it. And Mr. Dowling's such a good sport that each year the kids come up with this crazy combination. He lets them dream up whatever. He makes the burger in the class and eats the burger, eats the whole thing, even the topper. <laughs> and literally, he's just such a good sport. But along with the, the kid component and family and whatnot, over the last 11 years, like we actually have a generation of kids growing mm -hmm. up understanding a little bit more about where their food comes from and what supporting local means and understanding those firm fields uh, are putting food on their table. So it's a really good talking point, even not just from education, but around the kitchen table. All right, we'll take a short pause and come back and continue our conversation with Melanie Dover chatting about PEI Burger Love. And stay tuned in the third segment, we will reveal the winner of this year's Most Loved Burger Live right here on Island View. Stay with us. You're watching the season premiere of Island View on Eastlink Community TV. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Island View on Eastlink Community TV. I'm Matt Beardsley. Glad you could join us for the season premiere of Island View, our 12th season here. My guest tonight on our first show of the new season, Melody Dover from Fresh Media, the good folks behind PEI Burger Love, talking about campaign 11 for Burger Love. And, you know, the, we were just sort of chatting in the break, Melody. A, a lot of things have been a revelation to a lot of people over the last 18 months. But... Uh, <sighs> We found out that the supply chain and where we get our food and all the things that we consume and buy, uh, how fragile that is. And I know the restaurants and you folks speaking to them, they faced a lot of challenges with just, you know, sort of putting the and getting the ingredients together for Burger Love the past couple of years. Absolutely. And I mean, last year uh, when Burger Love happened in September, uh, we had the caveat for restaurants to note that if they had to make a change with an ingredient due to supply chain, that that's something that people would have to understand, right? I mean, mm. obviously supply and demand, <laughs> sometimes there's more demand than supply or, you know, just going through all the different policies um, of uh, delivery and what requirements there are for even if somebody is trucking some product here, although there are a lot of local products um, on our Burger Love Burgers. And over the last couple of years, we've highlighted who those local suppliers are. So when uh, someone goes to the website and sees the burger profile, there's a note at the bottom for the local suppliers. So <clears throat> people can see who um, their protein vendor is, or maybe they have a cheese vendor they deal with, or 
uh, a local uh, produce. And what's pretty cool about that is then as a consumer, if you really like, man, that was a really amazing cheese on that burger <laughs> and you know where it is locally, you can go source it for yourself to try at home, which, you know, we hope that's an additional spinoff as well. Um, but when it comes to uh, supply chain, uh, restaurants know local is great. And uh, I want to touch on that with uh, the farmers, but mm -hmm. You know, first of all, restaurants had to adapt not just due to supply chain, but the ever-changing rules with COVID to make it all work. Um, there was a lot of patio construction last year <laughs> and yeah. more this past year, too. Uh, people figuring out ways for uh, delivery and curbside pickup to make um, that transaction as simple and safe as possible with consumers. Uh, takeout definitely was a big thing. And even this year in September, halfway through the month, uh, the mask mandate came back for needing to wear masks indoors. And, you know, today being October 5th, the Vax Pass is something new <laughs> again people are dealing with. So, you know, kudos to the restaurants for, you know, really just going with the flow and uh, keeping, the, keeping their venues and their locations as welcoming as possible to consumers. Uh, one of the things we love every year, too, is uh, seeing those restaurants having fun behind the scenes, yeah. whether they get dressed up in a theme or they're goofing off in the kitchen or uh, just, you know, seeing all those burgers on the line. I, I really have to recognize we recognize uh, that they are very resilient folk that are dedicated to putting forward really great, good quality food for consumers. And uh, we've heard all the stories this past year. Every uh, industry has been definitely affected um, by COVID and uh, restaurants have really just kept trying to move forward. So, you know, there's a lot of admiration and respect for that. Uh, Melody, and again, uh, you know, if ever there was a time to recognize where our food comes and the importance of local and supporting local when a lot of things were closed and shut down and, you know, not everybody who's local is a big producer, some are small, and the importance of supporting those communities and those corner stores, corner gas station stores in your communities. <laughs> Just, you know, a word about, the, you know, the farmers, the people who make this really all possible in the end. Absolutely. Um, we're really happy to have presenting partnership uh, again this year with Federation of Agriculture and Department of Agriculture. And I mean, Federation of Agriculture, they are literally the voice of every agricultural industry across the island, you know, whether it's from beans and grains to potatoes, uh, to beef, poultry, veggies, you name it, even apples. Um, they definitely are there to help represent. Um, without the amazing local bounty that we have on the island, PEI Burger Love wouldn't quite be nearly mm. as delicious. And you can certainly taste the difference of local versus not local. Not that I'm completely biased, but I am a really big fan <laughs> of local and supporting local and in whatever form that is. And I think that with the lockdown last year and people being home more and cooking more or maybe experimenting with cooking more, I think they started to recognize the, what quality ingredients can really do. And fans recognize that importance of local when it comes to Burger Love. And this year, along with last year, we had a promotion called Think a Farmer. And some of the lovely comments from people really reflect um, how Islanders feel about our agricultural sector and the pride that we all have as Islanders in knowing that we really are very lucky to have tremendous food here. Um, I mean, harkening back 100 years, it was called the Million Acre Farm on PEI for very good reason. So by example, uh, a couple, just a couple of the comments mm -hmm. were, Dear PEI farmers, Burger Love is something that people all over PEI look forward to each year, and the hard work from everyone involved never goes without being appreciated greatly. It's a great time for people to be able to get together, enjoy a delicious meal, and would not be possible without you. Of course, it would be a pretty empty plate. <laughs> uh, long hours away from your families, short seasons, uh, mother nature, of course. Uh, these are only three of the many challenges you face to keep food on everyone's table. Thank you so much for all that you do. You're appreciated more than you know. And I think this one is one of my favorites. Uh, without the hard work of our farmers, we would not eat. We are so blessed to have the folks who work so faithfully in this industry. And I'm very proud to say I'm the daughter of a farmer. He loved the land and took great pride in care in his crops and livestock. It was a privilege to grow up in this setting. And if you've ever talked to a farmer, whether it's a new farmer or a multi-generational farm with a couple of generations working together, you can really see the pride and dedication that they have in 
not just uh, you know growing or, or raising livestock for, for people to enjoy, but they really take pride in knowing that they're nourishing people. All right, that's an excellent place to conclude for the end of our second segment. Stay with us. When we come back, we will reveal the winner of this year's Most Loved Burger for PEI Burger Love 2021. Stay with us. You're watching the season premiere of Island View on Easton Community TV. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the season premiere of Island View on Eastlink Community TV. I'm Matt Beersley. Glad you could join us as we kick off our 12th season and continue our conversation with Melody Dover from Fresh Media about PEI Burger Love. And uh, we here at Eastlink, happy to be back. We're trying to figure out how many years it is. Melody, year four? <laughs> I think it's year five, actually. I'm going to go with year five, uh, being associated uh, with this great island-wide campaign. And we are back this year with the local high five contest. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, I, we, I think we're in a weird time vortex still with COVID. <laughs> so, you know, we're just here again, yeah. right? Which is great. Uh, so this year, uh, we were really happy to have Eastlink jump on board with Local High Five, which was a new highlight that we brought into the campaign to further promote the love of local and supporting our island businesses. And we know that Eastlink loves businesses and small business and great community stories. And so, you know, we were happy to use our PEI Burger Love newsletter exclusively uh, to further promote participating restaurants who provided additional features and specials that they had during the promotion and also features and promotions that our um, subscribers for the newsletter could go out and enjoy in October as well. So thank you, Eastlink. Thanks, Matt. And I love coming back to talk to you every year. It's always great. It's <laughs> Hopefully like we'll be back in person next year. That's the goal. So next April. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Uh, one of the great things about PEI Burger Love is not obviously a bit enjoying great food and supporting local, but there's a charitable component and with the Give Back Burger that's been up and running now since the campaign. And over the course of uh, the last, I think, four years, you've, you've donated over $285,000. Yeah. And again, Anderson House is this year's recipient. You can talk a little bit about why this is yeah. so important to you folks. Well, you know, Anderson House uh, helps so many families across the island and uh, not to get too in depth in what exactly they deliver, um, but they are about family violence prevention. And uh, I think that is something that is a important aspect of our community. Mm -hmm. And they hold a very special place for us in terms of all the good work that they do. And we really appreciate the restaurants that choose to be a uh, give back burger restaurant. And we certainly appreciate the fans that go out and enjoy give back burgers because every give back burger sold during the campaign, $1 from each burger uh, goes to a donation to Anderson house. And, you know, when we started give back, uh, we initially started it with United way of PEI, which is really great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, our intention was how could we add something that is really positive to our local community and add a little more good to the island in some manner through Burgalove, especially uh, when we were getting to the point of Burgalove being such a, a positive community spirit event. And so, like you mentioned, we've had over 285000 almost $286,000 donated over the last couple of years with Give Back, And it's been more tremendous than we ever imagined. And we know every single one of those dollars is going to go towards building a better future um, for families on PEI. Uh, this year, <laughs> as I've said before, we just roll with it when it mm -hmm. comes to COVID. Uh, we don't have all of our total numbers in yet from the participating restaurants, including our give backs. So we don't necessarily have uh, a total dollar figure to share with you. But regardless of what it is, we know the funds will be appreciated by Anderson House mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be put to good use to help continue all the good work that they do. So again, thank you restaurants for being give back restaurants and thank you fans for purchasing give back burgers. All right, it's the moment we have been waiting for and restaurants who participated all across <laughs> PEI. Uh, uh, it's time to announce the winner of this year's most loved burger. I think it was the Row House last year, correct? Was, was it was Row yeah. House last year. Yeah, they were the defending champs, right? Um, and, and again, you know, thank you to all the restaurants that participated. Thank you to the fans, the farmers, uh, the vendors, the bakers, the butchers, all the suppliers, the napkin makers, whoever was involved. <laughs> 
Um, and, you know, and that said, we know that the restaurant teams uh, have worked their butts off. They put their best foot forward this year. We know they're tired. Um, COVID's been lingering, of course, it's not gone yet. And uh, we don't have all those totals either, but we have really good news. And the really good news is the big news, which is who will be PEI's Most Loved Burger. And the Most Loved Burger, just a reminder, is something that is determined by votes cast by PEI Burger Love fans through peiburgerlove.ca website. So it is really all determined by the public. And I would like to give a thank you to Meyer Canada, who jumped on board this year as our Most Loved Burger 2021 sponsor. And I'll just show you this really spiffy looking award. Uh, nice. There's a Meyer's pot on there too. Fun, right? <laughs> and through the partnership uh, with Meyer, the chef of the winning Most Loved Burger will receive a $2,500 cookware set custom engraved. Uh, with their name, which is pretty cool because, you know, then no one can steal their pots because they'll have their <laughs> name on it. And also the winning restaurant will receive a complimentary entry for PEI Burger Live 2022. So it's pretty exciting all around. Lots of good stuff. And when it comes to the big reveal of this year's Meyer Most Love Burger 2021 is, drum roll, <laughs> The Lone Ranger from Holy Cow. Oh. Holy Cow has always been a fan favorite with our Burger Love, uh, Burger Love population, and uh, they really knocked it out this year. There was lots of love for um, every single creation that they made. And if you're curious about what the Lone Ranger is, it's an eight ounce island beef patty with roasted garlic aioli, barbecue caramelized onion sauce, smoked gouda, maple bacon, pepper jelly, barbecue potato chips on a toasted and buttered brioche bun topped with a bacon wrapped bone in rib. So if you go have the Lone Ranger, you <laughs> will be full. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> and where is this particular restaurant? So Holy Cow is <laughs> located in downtown Morrell. Okay. And it's a really, uh, it's a really great fun location. The servers are awesome there. And obviously, so is the food. <laughs> and uh, it's a great, worthy little road trip. Um, Holy Cow also does have the Holy Cow 2.0 food truck currently set up in Parkdale. So for those folks that might not be interested in a road trip, uh, they can get one closer to town. But if you're interested in trying PEI Burger Love 2021 Meyer Most Love Burger, that's where you got to go. Uh, in our remaining moments here, Melody, again, you know, uh, Islanders are resilient and the restaurants have been resilient and the servers and the staff and the suppliers and everybody who participated. I know you're hopeful to be back in your <laughs> usual time slot in April 2022, but just, you know, your sort of your, your final thoughts on this year's campaign and, uh, you know, having worked with you now over the past four or five years, I know how much work goes into this. And uh, just sort of your final thoughts on getting to the end of another challenging campaign. <laughs> um, I like to think we're kind of like Santa, where we only take the month of like January off and then we work the other 11 months to pull Christmas together. Um, Burger Love is definitely something we put our heart into. Uh, there's no surprise for why there is an actual heart in the logo and it is all about love. When it comes to Burger Love, um, going into year 12, we're we're really holding out and aiming for spring 2022. Uh, so hopefully COVID uh, will kind of settle a bit. Uh, vaccinations will certainly help make everyone as safe as possible. And uh, we're looking for another fun year for next year. And I have no doubts that it's gonna be filled with delicious burgers as it is every single year. And it's a really great way to support local. Melody, again, really appreciate you taking some time to, to speak with us tonight and looking forward to speaking with you in person next uh, end of April, early May to announce the winner next year. <laughs> I hope so, too. I hope so, too. I could, you know, pretend I'm in Barcelona and no one would know, <laughs> but I'm literally in downtown Charlottetown. Unfortunately, we're not face to face, but I look forward to that next year, too. Thanks again. Thanks, Matt. All right, for the rest of the crew, I'm Matt Beardsley. Thanks for watching the season premiere of Island View on Eastland Community TV. We'll see you next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock.